All right, hi everyone. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign and we are so excited to be here to present our talk, Pushing the Limits of Moodle as an LTI Tool. So here is a QR code if you'd like to access our slides. Um, I'll give you a moment to scan that if you'd like. We'll also have it for you at the end. So some introductions. My name is Rihanna Beachy Hasnick. I'm the Moodle Service Manager for the University of Illinois. I'm joined by my colleagues Liam, who is a system specialist, and Gosha, who is an infrastructure engineer. So in our presentation today, I'm gonna to talk about the LMS landscape at the University of Illinois, um, talk about the Moodle LTI tool that we have been developing, um, and discuss user experience, feedback, and improvements that we've made. Liam's gonna talk about the technical implementation and our tentative roadmap. Gosha will talk about our Moodle infrastructure upgrades, and then we'll wrap it up and share some of our future plans. So the University of Illinois has always had more than one LMS. Historically, we have had one centrally supported LMS that's available to everyone, but then individual colleges or departments may use a different one. Our unit is within the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, which is the biggest college within the university. LAS adopted Moodle back in 2005 at the request of our faculty, and we have hosted and maintained our own Moodle instance since then. We have a very strong user base who loves Moodle and who has spent the last 20 years creating content that can only be created in Moodle, using the flexibility and specific content types that other LMSs do not offer. To give you an idea of the size of our Moodle instance, we reached peak um, usage during the early pandemic with an average of 900 courses and 25,000 unique users per semester. My team's philosophy has always focused on user experience and we have made many, many custom changes over the years based on our user needs. But in the past few years, there has been a campus-wide push for the consolidation of these different LMSs to only use the centrally supported one, which right now is Canvas. So students want to log into one LMS rather than two or three, and administration agrees that we should simplify. So in June 2023, our college leadership decided that LAS courses must be offered on Canvas by fall 2024. Um, we knew many of our users would not be able to simply move to Canvas and that they would lose their pedagogical materials that they have spent years creating. So we came up with another solution, the Moodle LTI. So with new capability introduced in the Moodle 4 update, we were able to configure a Moodle environment as an external tool in the Canvas environment. Just like other external tools that one can use in Moodle or Canvas, um, we can embed Moodle activities or entire courses within a Canvas shell. Courses are accessed from Canvas, solving students' concerns over multiple points of access, while allowing instructors to retain the materials and specific features of Moodle that they depend on. All right. If you're not familiar with the Canvas LMS, it was designed for simplicity. So as you can see in these photos, there are only eight content types that you can add in Canvas as opposed to Moodle's many more options. The idea with Canvas is that anything that is missing can be added via external tool, which makes Moodle the perfect fit for an LTI in Canvas and replaces the need for many other LTIs in Canvas since Moodle does so much. So to start work on this Moodle LTI tool, we first created a fresh Moodle server so we could make customizations specific to our LTI needs. The code base and site admin settings were duplicated from our production Moodle environment so that overall it would behave the same way that instructors were used to. Before we could configure it in Canvas, it had to go through the approval process um, that our central IT unit conducts on all LTIs for Canvas. This included a vendor risk review, which assesses security and privacy, as well as an accessibility review. And you can see the workflow diagram here, outlining the steps that we needed to take to get it approved. We got it up and running within a few months. We knew there was still a lot of work to do, but we wanted a small group of users to start using it as soon as possible um, so we could spot bugs and get feedback from um, actual instructors. And so we reached out to some of our most experienced Moodle users and we had nine courses pilot it for the fall 23 semester. And this semester was really integral in getting the LTI functional. We resolved a lot of bugs, figured out how instructors needed it to work and fixed user experience issues. In spring 24, 
Uh, we had 48 courses as word started to spread within departments and we advertised a bit more heavily. Our official launch was this semester in fall 24 um, and we currently have 137 courses using this LTI tool and this number continues to grow. We are still working on improving the tool. Since the start, um, we have been breaking work down into monthly sprints with a monthly downtime and really treating it as a software development project. In these sprints, we balance urgent bugs reported by users or that we uncover in testing, requested features, and then bigger picture improvements that may be more behind the scenes or not as urgent. So we have two LTI options for our users. The first one is embedding an entire Moodle course into Canvas. Mm -hmm. So this option is the most popular um, this semester. It was the easiest way to get a lot of courses from Moodle to Canvas quickly. Um, you can see in the screenshot, an entire Moodle course site has been embedded within a Canvas shell. So the Moodle course shows up as one link or activity in Canvas, which does create a couple complications. Um, this means that only one item shows up in the Canvas gradebook and each activity within the Moodle course shares the same Canvas URL. The other option is to embed individual activities within a Canvas site. The idea with this is to have Moodle activities alongside native Canvas ones um, with Moodle activities filling in the gaps of what Canvas cannot offer. So this option has been less popular this semester, but we expect this to be used more um, in the long-term usage of the tool as instructors learn more about how to use Canvas tools but may be missing a specific functionality um, that is available in Moodle. With this option, every available, uh, or every activity is its own link in Canvas, so they show up individually in the Canvas gradebook without any differentiation from Canvas activities. So as Moodle Service Manager, I am responsible for being the liaison between our clients and our technical team. So feedback comes to me, I distill it, and then my team and I have a discussion about what we can do about it. And if it's something we want to pursue, I oversee the development and coordinate any user testing. So first I wanted to share some general feedback that we've received about the LTI. So in general, um, our users are really grateful that they're able to keep using Moodle while Campus is pushing them to use Canvas. Many have noted that Canvas on its own simply does not meet their needs. One thing we were concerned about was student experience. Would it be confusing for students to have a Moodle site or Moodle content embedded within their Canvas sites? We have gotten feedback from some instructors that it has been a seamless experience for students and they don't actually realize that they're using another system. So next, I want to go through a few of our user interface improvements that we've made. Um, when we were first designing the tool, we knew it needed to feel like a seamless part of Canvas, but shouldn't be too different from what our users were familiar with. Um, we removed the top navigation panel in Moodle, um, breadcrumb navigation and activities, and we matched text color with Canvas. Since we removed some of the navigation, we added a few small things back in. Um, we added a link to the course main page in the index and then added what we're calling a user chip in the upper right corner where instructors can access edit mode um, and their preferences. Our most requested improvement was to expand the space that the LTI takes up in Canvas for instructors. Our quick solution to this was adding in the open a new tab button that you can see um, in the screenshot in the user chip which opens up the course on the Moodle server rather than just seeing it within Canvas. And this gave instructors more editing room. Um, but later using the post message API so that Moodle could control the layout in Canvas, we were able to remove these unnecessary side panels that you can see here. The panel on the right was not useful for either type of LTI, it just had a button to edit the Canvas activity. So we removed that panel completely. And on the left is a collapsible course navigation for the Canvas site. So we collapse this by default in entire course embeds since they don't really need Canvas navigation, but we leave it open in individual activity embeds since they do need to navigate the Canvas course. All right, the next improvement I'm going to mention is the LTI picker. So this is how you add LTI activities to a Canvas site. By default, it shows you a list of every activity that you have access to. Um, but this quickly gets cumbersome for site admins, course coordinators, and anyone else with access to a lot of Moodle sites. So we added a tab that displays the activities that are available 
for the specific Canvas site you're in, and then puts everything else you have access to in the second tab. We've also made a few improvements for our site admins. So in the past year, we have mostly been adding the LTI for instructors, but we do plan to move towards a more self-service model in the future. We added an automation to batch publish LTI activities, which is useful for courses with a lot of individual activity LTIs. We also added these two forced sync buttons that allow us to manually sync the grade and roster tasks from the UI, which has been really useful. All right, the last thing I'm gonna go over is a few functionality improvements alongside the feedback that we got requesting them. A really big one was notifications. So we initially disabled them because we didn't want students to be confused by receiving Moodle emails from their Canvas course. But we very quickly heard from instructors that they really need notifications, especially from forum and scheduler activities. Um, we were able to configure redirects so that any links pointing towards Moodle in the emails get redirected to the proper Canvas activity. Um, then there were a couple activities that weren't working properly with LTI at the beginning. So questionnaire was not initially gradable and workshop was not sending grades correctly. So we were able to resolve those issues. Um, and then we've also made a lot of improvements to our roster and grade syncing tasks. Liam will talk about this a bit more, but we made them run much more efficiently. And a really important thing for our users was that rosters can sync without users having to launch into the LTI first. All right, and with that, I will pass it to Liam, who will go more in depth on our technical implementation. All right, so many of us are familiar with this visualization that depicts the evolution of LMS adoption in the US and Canada over the past quarter century. Uh, you can see the pandemic's jolt to the market in 2020, where notably Blackboard shed a large chunk of institutions in favor of Canvas. Uh, we were one of them. Also, a non-trivial group of Moodle mi uh, users migrated to the customized and hosted open LMS, most likely to keep Moodle, but also rapidly achieved the scale they needed for emergency remote teaching, but felt unprepared to achieve in-house. All of us are here to celebrate Moodle's excellence as an LMS, but Moodle's LTI tool functionality makes every competing LMS adoption another opportunity for Moodle to benefit teaching and learning. As Rihanna mentioned, the Moodle environments that we operate contain two decades of user uh, requested customizations requiring careful code review and testing when we do our upstream Moodle merges. Code base integration is already part of our jobs. Uh, now is the right time for scouting the frontiers of the LTI authentication and enrollment components since Moodle's LTI platform component, mod LTI, is in a soft freeze while migrating to Moodle core for the 5.0 release. Until the feature set and implementation details of the redesigned LTI platform consumer uh, component is out the door, it wouldn't make sense for Moodle HQ to commit uh, significant development resources against the LTI provider, provider components so we can expect them to remain relatively stable for at least another year. So what have we accomplished? Out of the box, newly created users from the LTI authentication component have obfuscated usernames instead of their real username, and that prevents LTI tools in the Moodle tool from working how they need to. For example, our campus uses the Kaltura video management system. And if we don't perform LTI launches to Kaltura containing the logged in user's actual username, a new account gets created there that doesn't have access to the real user's videos. It's broken. We patched this for our needs, but a universal, uh, a universal patch will require a flexible admin menu and probably a command line toolkit to reliably extract the username from wherever a given platform puts it in both launch and members data. How to deal with username collisions and multi-tenant Moodle LTI tools isn't a problem for us, but is why Auth LTI currently uses an obfuscated uh, username out of the box. Similarly, we need to have group memberships synchronized from Canvas to Moodle since we have very large Canvas courses containing smaller sections with different teaching assistants assigned to the different sections. Students would transfer from section to section to be able to work with friends or to find a more compatible teaching assistant. And we needed those assignments to be reflected in Moodle 2, where much of the grading and teaching was taking place. However, activities like this group choice plugin shown here um, allows students to self-select into ad hoc groups, groups not populated by Canvas via our school information system, so they can collaborate on other Moodle group activities later in the course. We do not want students to be removed from these ad hoc Moodle groups just because Canvas is unaware of them and doesn't make use of them. From discussions in the Moodle.org uh, forums and tracker, many Moodle LTI tool users want a completely different group populating mechanism where the publish as tool, uh, LTI, as, tool, as LTI tool menu can include a group for LTI users to be added to. This is desired for use cases where LTI is one of many enrollment plus, uh, methods for a given course. 
Uh, Moodle sync members scheduled task, which synchronizes the roster from the platform LMS to the Moodle tool, has to work for any implementation of the LTI standard a platform can cobble together. Uh, by optimizing the task specifically for Canvas, we were able to dramatically reduce the amount of time the task takes to ex execute while also supporting group and role assignments the way we needed. Uh, Moodle to Moodle LTI integrations can have enrollments at activity level granularity and Canvas can't, so the task can be simplified. Another big chunk of work is that the standard task downloads all user pictures on every run, which takes about an hour at our scale. We cache the user profile picture URLs and only download the picture if the URL changes. We also paralyzed the task following a very smart contribution from David Pesch, who's two doors down, for the sync grades task in Moodle 4.2. Our scheduled task, task creates lists of resources that need to be synced to each unique LTI roster endpoint and uh, process them concurrently in ad hoc tasks. So refactoring the work into ad hoc tasks also made it practical to implement the four sync buttons that Rihanna showed earlier, since those buttons simply create an ad hoc task and Ajax polling reports the progress of the task to the page. For high enrollment courses with lots of individual activity, the ad hoc task, the ad hoc sync member task can take up to 15 minutes to complete for a new course, but all of the concurrent tasks finish within 20 minutes, typically, whereas previously the full task just took just under six hours to complete. As Rihanna mentioned, the first negative feedback we got was due to our decision to disable notification emails, which substantially degraded the experience of forum and scheduler activities in particular. The reason we disabled emails is that the links in those emails to our LTI Moodle pages would leave students locked out of the building without any obvious front door, since, L since Auth LTI doesn't have a login page. The platform is the login page. Our first improvement was to rewrite the email templates to only provide links uh, to our Canvas instance so students could at least figure out a way to get to the forum page if sufficiently self-motivated. Our next improvement was, for all incoming launches, to record data sufficient to reconstruct the URL for the Canvas page that launches the Moodle page requested and stored in a table. Then we used the existing pre-login page hook to uh, redirect any 403 visitors to the Canvas page that launches closest to the requested resource, or else the base URL uh, for our Canvas instance if we'd never seen that page before. So if we've seen a successful launch from a Canvas module item into a particular Moodle course module, we can redu redirect any subsequent unauthent unauthenticated attempts to access that course module to the Canvas page that we know opens the requested module pa Moodle page in an iframe with a working session, creating a functioning auth LTI login page. Some of you may have thought to yourselves, how do we know which platform course to redirect an unauthenticated uh, fizzer to if multiple courses are reusing the same resource on the Moodle LTI tool? We want to is explicitly disallow any Moodle course or course module to, to be reused by more than one Canvas course to prevent any possibility of cohort bleed where students from one platform cohort can in interact with students uh, from another platform cohort since this would constitute a potential privacy violation. Like Aikido master Steven Seagal here, we have technique to effortlessly, effortlessly sidestep such a violation. This is a very real concern with Canvas 2, since the way you typically turn over your courses each term is by creating a new Canvas course shell and then using the import existing content tool that works much like Moodle's import or restore course features. For LTI activities, this reuses custom data used from the source course of the import and so sends the new cohort to the old Moodle course. Without getting into the weeds, we use the same data table as for 403 redirections to enforce this constraint. The first time we detect content being re reused in a new Canvas course, a new LTI context, we react by making a, a new copy of the, of the Moodle course. Subsequent requests using the old custom data from this new LTI context have the custom data rewritten to instead use the equivalent content from the new Moodle course created for that Canvas course. One thing we're unsure about is how to handle grades in full course embeds. The existing enroll LTI component aggregates all the course grade items and sends them to a single uh, line item on the platform, since that's all you can do in LTI 1.1. This can be a little confusing since when you initially add a Moodle LTI 1.3 resource to Canvas, it sets the line item to have the same point value as the Moodle gradebook point total, something LTI 1.1 could not do. If you add gradable activities in your Moodle course after adding it to Canvas, you have a point total mismatch between the gradebooks, and it can get confusing how the grades percentages are calculated on Canvas, especially in scenarios where some students' grades are calculated using different denominators, depending on if they had their most recent grade sent before or after a change in the Moodle course's point total. We created the force grade sync button in part to deal with this sort of problem. 
But given that precedent for coarse grade item aggregation, we added features to our Moodle to similarly handle multi-grade activity like work workshop that are popular on our, our campus, like workshop and forms using both the whole form grading and rating grades uh, to aggregate the grades into a single line item on canvas as well. Something LTI 1.3 can do that LTI 1.1 could not is create and manage new li grade line items on the platform gradebook. Something akin to this amazing ship, the Slapnir, a floating crane which would sail into your harbor and start rearranging your city. Similarly, Moodle the LTI 1.3 tool could create and manage one-to-one -one all the line items on the platform gradebook for each of the grade items on Moodle. The usual caveats apply. This is complicated since different platform LMSs have different details about how LTI tool generated gradebook line items behave. Uh, a theme that I hope has been made clearly by Rian and me is that modern LTI is a flexible and powerful set of standards implemented differently by different LMSs. For Moodle as an LTI tool to provide a perfect experience in all platform LMSs is to ask an awful lot. What we've accomplished is almost surely too tailored to our specific needs to be perfect for all Moodle into Canvas uh, LTI integration use cases. We've been careful to avoid premature optimization to Moodle's core auth and enroll LTI components, given the certainty that they will need to change considerably once uh, Moodle 5's LTI platform implementation details emerge to make best use of those new features. To that end, wherever possible, we run all customizations within a local plugin instead of guaranteeing monthly banishment to integration hell with the core enroll and auth LTI components. Doing so is sometimes trivially, trivially easy, like with the sync members task, where we simply disable and enroll LTI's scheduled task and enable our own local plugins canvas optimized task. Other optimizations are necessarily more invasive where we need to override the normal behavior of the standard components in environments where our local plugin is installed and configured. We think this design decision has us on the right track though, and would advocate for making it a part of how enroll and auth LTI work instead of bloating up those components to handle all possible corner cases, especially for Moodle LTI environments more complicated than ours, where multiple platform integrations with different LMSs could use different local LTI tool plugins to meet the particular customer needs of each integration. Before handing the baton over to Gosha, I want to state our aspirations for collaboration with the global Moodle community. Uh, we need to implement all, the, all these features and more for our user base and have thus far deployed them just in time. We believe that prototyping changes that work for our use case and that support the proposed local LTI tool architecture for non-Moodle platform optimized behavior is inherently useful. And we trust Moodle's triage processes and hope to contribute many of these features to enroll and auth LTI to make Moodle's LTI tool experience first rate. Um, put another way, we're visitors for one possible future where we had to deliver these features for our client in a hurry and on our own. Now that we can consolidate gains and see which of any of these contributions can be refined to have a place in the mainline Moodle project, we're confident our own Moodle environment will greatly benefit from your more experienced input. Good show. Yeah, so, um, as Rihanna has mentioned during my, during the introduction, my name is Gosha and I'm responsible for development, developing, maintaining the Moodle infrastructure uh, on our campus. Um, so I would say after 20 years of running Moodle, we have uh, we've become pretty darn good at uh, <clears throat> good at managing it and uh, managing it reliably and efficiently. However, with the dawn of a potentially large LTI deployment, if this takes off, uh, our design likely has to change. So uh, here's a quite dense diagram of the current stack. Uh, we'll move past that rather quickly. Uh, currently, we're maintaining two separate. Um, Currently we maintain two separate Moodle stacks, each with at least 14 nodes, one for the regular Moodle environment and one for the LTI. The nodes are Linux VMs and they're running on our on-premise VMware cloud and we manage all that with Ansible. Uh, the database is handled by a three node per kernel cluster that we have geographically separated across our campus. And lastly, we maintain uh, two separate production branches, one for the, uh, the LTI and one for uh, the regular Moodle. And all that's also managed with Ansible and deployed with Ansible. Uh, so this brings us to the next generation, <coughs> uh, which is the future for our Moodle infrastructure. Over the past six months, uh, we have worked to de uh, develop a production on-premise Kubernetes deployment, and that's to modernize our application and uh, hosting capabilities. Uh, this recent development um, is a perfect new home um, for a stable Moodle uh, providing LTI services to Canvas. Uh, the, uh, in this diagram, the six static web workers would become scalable PHP FPM pods. Redis would be handled by an excellent deployment from Bitnami. Chrome could be handled by uh, Kubernetes scheduled tasks. And finally, a file conversion 
would be done by LibreOffice pods. Um, all this allows for almost every component of Moodle, um, of the Moodle stack, to scale live based on usage, which would be needed for the LTI. Uh, with the only exception being the database and file servers, which we already have significant hardware uh, investments in. Um, so while the, uh, the future state for our infrastructure is looking quite promising, a few challenges yet remain. Uh, firstly, code management. There are multiple pros and cons to incorporating the Moodle code directly into, into worker images versus hosting the code externally and mounting into the running containers. Uh, testing for the LTI environment has also proven to be a little bit challenging. Our normal strategy of cloning the production database does not work uh, too well with the one-to-one -one, uh, bi-directional linkage um, in the L um, LTI 1.3 spec. Uh, so furthermore, uh, a great deal of work still needs to be done to make the deployment maintainable. Helm will be used to uh, deploy and template all the uh, Kubernetes components, and this will have to replace years of uh, refined Ansible automation that's, that's gotten us uh, this far, and that should be a pretty significant undertaking. And, uh, and lastly, the new design will replace our aging Calper event store, which is just a, uh, a glorified Mongo database with a Java front end, which, uh, um, so we plan to comply with our campus initiatives to ship all the educational data to our central campus uh, Splunk data store. So yeah, sorry about that very dense information dump, but I'll hand it back to Rihanna. <clears throat> all right, so looking ahead on our campus, we are committed to providing this tool long-term and continually improving it to meet our users' needs. Something we're in the midst of finishing right now is a self-service course request system so that users can request the Moodle LTI without site admin intervention. We also hope to expand to other colleges within the university. Right now, we're just offering the LTI to our home college, LAS, but we have other Moodle users across campus who are interested in using it as well. Something we're also starting to think about is how to market the LTI to instructors who haven't used Moodle before. Maybe they're very comfortable using Canvas, but might be missing a specific functionality that is possible in Moodle. With the broader Moodle community, we are really excited for further collaboration um, while balancing our need to diverge to add features custom to our implementation, but also staying in sync with HQ as much as possible. Um, we also really look forward to getting feedback from other Moodle users around the world who may be starting to venture into using Moodle as an LTI tool. All right, and I know we probably don't have time for questions, but we have a poster session tomorrow, so please come talk to us. Um, yeah, thank you.